This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to a half hour Olympic edition of Here and Now. I'm Anthony Germain. For the next two weeks, we'll be airing at this time of the evening with an abbreviated newscast. So let's get right to our top story. The Catholic Church is moving closer to paying damages to victims of sexual abuse at the Mount Cashel Orphanage during the 1940s, 50s and 60s. This weekend, the Archdiocese of St. John's announced that it's selling properties to raise money to do that. But a lawyer who represents dozens of abuse victims says it's likely the beginning of a long process that may eventually involve the provincial government. Here now is Mark Quinn reports. I'm pleased. It's, uh, it's a step in the process, but it's an important step, and we're glad to see that it's finally happening. Lawyer Jeff Budden reacting to the news that the Catholic Church is selling some well-known properties to raise money to compensate men who were sexually abused at the former Mount Cashel orphanage. The properties going up for sale include the Mount St. Francis building in St. John's and the Archbishop's residence in Outer Cove. Budden says it won't be enough to compensate the victims he knows about. The judgment was for four men and the total of the, the total judgment was for two point, uh, approximately 2.6, 2.7 million dollars. There are in fact well over 60 men. Our firm has 60 survivors or more and uh, other firms have some also. So the, it's going to take a, quite a large pool of money, tens of millions of dollars. It's still unknown how much the total value of the church's assets is worth, and it's also unknown how much the church will be expected to pay in damages. But Jeff Budden says it could get complicated if the church is expected to sell some of the dozens of schools that it owns, and some of those schools are still being used by school districts. We have some real issues with that. After the denominational school systems ended in the late 1990s, school districts were given school buildings owned by the church to use rent-free until they were no longer needed. Budden says that arrangement may have to change. The goal is not to, uh, to turn uh, children out of schools or anything foolish like that. The goal is to see the government ultimately take responsibility, uh, take over the schools in every sense, pay off the, uh, the true value of the schools to the archdiocese, continue to use them as schools if they're needed, but allow compensation to be paid out of the proceeds of, of that compensation. As for the church, Archbishop Peter Hunt isn't doing interviews right now, but his latest written update on the church's ongoing reorganization promises more property sales are coming. Mark Quinn, CBC News, St. John's. Well, police say a 67-year-old man has died after his SUV collided with a tractor trailer on the Beta Spare Highway. Officers say the transport truck was rounding a turn and veered into the oncoming lane and collided with the SUV. The driver died and a female passenger was taken to hospital in Grand Falls, Windsor with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the driver of the transport truck wasn't injured. Well, the Minister of Justice has named Patrick Roach as Interim Chief of Police at the RNC. Roach has been a member of the RNC since 1985 and was most recently the commanding officer for Cornerbrook and Labrador. He's replacing Chief Joe Boland, who is set to retire on Friday. Roach will take over on Saturday and he'll remain the interim chief until the Independent Appointments Commission chooses a permanent replacement for Boland. <laughs> Fairly nice day out there today. Area of low pressure offshore, but in behind that, we actually saw some clearing skies uh, for parts of the province today. We do have some cloud cover moving in now, along with some showers, and that will be the story as we head through the overnight tonight. As those showers continue to work their way northeast across the island and then affect most of Labrador through the evening hours and overnight hours as well. Looks like we'll see those showers as we get into the early morning hours for eastern areas of the island. Temperatures tonight looking pretty. Pretty nice, 13 to 16 degrees across the province. Uh, temperatures a little cooler for Lab City, sitting around 10 degrees. But again, those unsettled conditions will continue. It's going to stay unsettled through the day tomorrow as well, with the risk of some thunderstorms. But I'll get into those details when I come back. Thanks, Ashley. A new group within Memorial University's archaeology department says it's prepared to help Indigenous communities who may want to investigate unmarked graves in the province. The team is made up of archaeologists, researchers, as well as community representatives. Now, that group came, became formed after unmarked graves were found in other provinces. CBC reporter Patrick Butler spoke with the researchers. 
When we all got the tragic news um, from Tecumloops to Schwetnik about the unmarked graves associated with the residential school, I immediately knew it wouldn't be long before we got questions both from communities, indigenous communities here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and also media and other people who were interested wanting to know what was being done here. So I talked to some of my colleagues and to uh, folks in some of the indigenous communities about setting up a little working group um, to really to answer questions for communities predominantly about what could be done archaeologically in association with unmarked graves. In addition to um, the areas that are uh, based on uh, background historical research and uh, working with communities and interviewing individuals about their memories of location, which is all a key part of this and, and really the fundamental part, um, from a technical side, one of the tools that's been, I guess, highlighted thus far has been a, a tool called Ground Penetrating Radar, or abbreviated GPR. Um, and it has the capacity to detect when burials have occurred, whether there's objects in those burials or not. Um, and so it's a, it's a non-destructive technique that one can use to, to help identify whether or not there's been a disturbance in the soil. We don't want to say, hey, we're ready to go, we'll do this work for you. It's nothing like that. If the communities decide that they want to know some more information about a known cemetery where there may be graves, for example, um, it, we're, we're ready and we, we will help them. But certainly these are, these are huge community questions and they have to be talked through in the communities and understood in the communities. And I believe that's a process that's going on now. We're just in the background, ready to help if and when necessary. Well, to politics, the federal conservative leader was in the province today in St. John's in what appears to be an unofficial campaign stop, since the election hasn't been called yet. Aaron O'Toole promised to fix the fiscal stabilization program to support jobs and public services in the province. The idea is to try to provide supports when the oil industry is in a downturn. It is a form of an equalization rebate, as you were contributing more than you should have during a steep drop in resource revenues. This rebate will allow Newfoundland and Labrador to reinvest additional funds into the recovery of your economy and to help create jobs. This will give the province an immediate $70 million in equalization rebate. But just as importantly, this will provide insurance for the provinces against future oil shocks. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency is recalling a cheese product that was distributed across Atlantic Canada, Ontario and Quebec. The agency says it's recalling Cahill's brand original Irish porter cheese due to possible listeria contamination. There's this one that you're looking at, a 200 gram package. And then there's this one, a larger product that comes in at 2.27 kilograms. People shouldn't eat the cheese. Instead, the agency says the items should be thrown out or you should return them to the place where you bought them. Well, the 45th annual Newfoundland Folk Festival continued over the weekend with traditional music in Bannerman Park in St. John's. The festival is taking a different approach this year because of the pandemic, and instead of one weekend filled with concerts, it's having a series of smaller events over the summer. So today is a continuation of the 45th annual Newfoundland and Labrador Folk Festival presented by Equinor. So we're spending the afternoon here in Bannerman Park. We just had a tune session uh, with a few players and we'll have a couple of youth performers on starting at 2 o'clock. Uh, so we've been doing this every Saturday and uh, we've got a lot of events all over the place which are going on until August 1st. I think the Newfoundland Labrador Folk Festival probably has one of the most diverse audiences that I've come across. It's really um, people from all backgrounds, all ages. Um, you know, we try and present something that's great for families to come out and enjoy. And yeah, it's been nice. It feels like we're getting back to normal a little bit. It's been a very strange um, year and a half for musicians and music presenters and the performing arts in general. So we haven't been doing any public events for a long time. So I, I was a little emotional when I saw the first crowd in front of me, but it's been really, really nice to see people getting back together again. It certainly is. Well, to sports now, another young hockey player from Newfoundland and Labrador could soon be joining the big leagues. The Vegas Golden Knights selected Zach Dean last night in the first round of the NHL entry draft. 
Dean played minor hockey in Mount Pearl and then joined the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. From the Gatineau Olympic of the Canadian Hockey League, the Vegas Golden Knights are proud to select Zach Dean. There we go, two-way player. Well, Dean spent last season, as you just heard, with the Gatineau Olympic of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Now, it's now been three years in a row that a player from Newfoundland and Labrador has been chosen in the first round of the draft, with Dean joining Dawson Mercer from Bay Roberts and Alex Newhook from St. John's. Well, we told you last week about how seniors at Alderwood Retirement Centre successfully appealed the province's rules around dancing in long-term care homes during the pandemic. Well, after nearly 17 months of COVID-19 anti-boogie restrictions preventing large gatherings, the seniors at Alderwood Estates in Whitless Bay were finally able to host a dance party for their friends and family, and they invited us along. <laughs> This is always so much fun with all the contests and all the music and dancing. But because of COVID, we weren't allowed to dance. So we only found out on Wednesday that we would be allowed to dance at this at this festival. The seniors left their walkers, they got out of their wheelchairs, they came out on this um, on Harbour Road here in Willis Bay and shut it down in a flash mob that has never been seen before on Harbour Road. First time ever. <laughs> Everybody was letting go and foot loose, foot loose. That's the way it was, yeah. They say that we couldn't do this for, I think it was a year and a half actually. And all of a sudden now we can, you know, we're free. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. The most exciting moment of the afternoon is always the Celebrity Capelin Eating Contest. And that is a smackdown. This year, we had a smackdown between our MP, Ken McDonald, and our MP, Seamus O'Regan. Oh, we had, I was determined I was getting the gold medal. I nearly choked getting it, but I used to put handfuls in my mouth. But I won anyway, so that's the main thing. <laughs> we never thought this was going to be such a big thing, you know. We just wanted to dance. And we were fighting for all the seniors, really, in Newfoundland. And, we never dreamed that it would turn out to be such a heat as it was. It was so nice to be able to get out and be free. It was lovely. Listen, they have been ready for this party since 11 o'clock. They've been sitting in the lobby and they've asked me, is it time yet? When can we go out? When does the music start? They were chomping at the bit to get out here today and boogied up at, uh, at our Capelin Festival. In Newfoundland, it's, it's so important to have all this community spirit, and we haven't been able to have it. So, you know, we had the families out, we had the music, we were allowed to dance. There were so many reasons to celebrate today, truthfully. And to be cool, but just being cold. Still ahead tonight, Newfoundland's Tim Baker performs for the new Governor General during her installation ceremony today.
A pretty nice start to the work week this week, certainly up across Labrador weekend temperatures even and Cartwright reaching the 30s uh, temperatures. Pretty beautiful again today. 26 degrees in Cartwright, 28 in Makovic. That is the warm spot across the province this afternoon. 22 degrees in Lab City and those temperatures pretty beautiful across most of the island as well. 26 degrees in Cornerbrook and 19 in St. John. So we do have that area of low pressure offshore. We are seeing some showers working their way towards south uh, western portions of the island and that will be the story as we head through the evening hours tonight. Some showers going to continue to work their way across the board and then continue uh, as we head through the day tomorrow. In fact, we do have the risk that we will see some thunderstorms along with this one as well. Uh, the heaviest showers at this point look like they'll be into the evening hours for central Labrador as we see some of that heavier rain move in more than likely this is where we're going to see the majority of the thunderstorm activity but that will extend down through uh, uh, the west coast and maybe even uh, for eastern areas of the island uh, as we get into the evening hours as well so there's that risk this is the best chance of seeing the thunderstorms but like i said there is a chance we could see a few isolated showers and or thunderstorms uh, the further uh, east we go as the day goes on so temperatures tomorrow Looking nice again uh, into the mid 20s through parts of central. Same thing for the west coast, a little cooler, but still in the 20s for eastern areas of uh, the island up across Labrador. Though you're looking at temperature near 13 degrees in Lab City, similar temperature for Nain, and then some uh, sunshine possible, at least a few peaks of sun. But again, those heavier showers moving in for central Labrador. Things will improve slightly as we get into Wednesday for the island. We should see a mix of sun and cloud through the day. Temperatures not moving too, too much, anywhere from 20 to 24 degrees. A little cooler in the southwest, keeping you cloudy through the day. About 18 degrees and 21 for Marystown. That chance of showers will stick around as well. Temperatures will drop uh, for most of Labrador. Back down into the mid to high teens. Cooler for Nain, 11 degrees. And then things will slightly improve temperature wise uh, for Thursday across the big land. 19 degrees for Lab City. You'll finally see that sun come out and uh, the chance of showers will stick around for southeastern portions of Labrador. However, a few peaks of sun also in the mix and then we're going to see those temperatures dip a little bit across uh, the island. Temperature sitting somewhere between 19 to 21. Still nice, uh, but that chance of showers just skirting uh, central and eastern areas of the island through the day. We're actually going to see a ridge of high pressure move in and dominate the southwest and that's why you're going to see sunshine as the day goes on. Now by Friday, it looks like things will get much nicer. 19 degrees, uh, or at least with some sunshine, 19 degrees uh, for your Friday. By Saturday, we're looking a little bit unsettled as well, but your temperature should flirt with a 20 degree mark through the afternoon. As far as uh, central Labrador or central Newfoundland goes, rather, you're looking at a temperature uh, into the 20s, low 20s through the uh, as we get into the weekend. But things looking, like I said, a little bit unsettled as we get into Saturday. Going to keep those skies gray at this point for western Newfoundland. Nice start, though, 22 degrees. And then we're into those mid 20s again uh, as we get into the weekend. So. As far as uh, eastern Labrador goes, unfortunately, it is looking a little bit unsettled as we get into the weekend and should stay that way. A few peaks of sun possible, though, for both Thursday and Friday. However, temperatures look like they'll dip into the teens as we get into Saturday and then for Lab West. Nice through to Friday at this point, looking at a mix of sun and cloud. But again, those temperatures will drop overnight low, still staying in the double digits, though. And we're looking at uh, the potential for some showers on Saturday. Now, I don't normally do this, but I wanted to share this photo. This is my photo this this time. This is a blur bluebird Sunday. Got the opportunity to uh, visit Fair Island this weekend, did some fishing, great community there, met lots of nice friends, uh, but I wanted to share that photo with you. So lovely shot there. If you have any weather photos that you'd like to share with us, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca.
Well, some history today. Canada has a new Governor General. Mary Simon became the first Indigenous person to represent the Queen in Canada. Now Simon is tasked with healing Indigenous people's relationship with the Crown, as well as boosting the public's perception of Rideau Hall following the resignation of the very controversial Julie Payette. CBC's Ashley Burke reports. An installation ceremony like no other. Steeped in symbolism, marking historic change. Mary Simon's Inuit culture honored. As she replaces the Chief Justice, he stepped in to fill the role during the second longest vacancy at Rideau Hall in history. Not every day is this formal. Mary Simon now taking over during a significant time as Canada reckons with its dark past. Simon, Canada's former Arctic ambassador and a tireless advocate for Indigenous rights, stood up in the Senate and promised to work against climate change, advocate for mental health and repair the relationship between Indigenous peoples and the Crown. I have heard from Canadians who describe a renewed sense of possibility for our country and hope that I can bring people together. Her message also delivered in Inuktitut, another first. My Inuk name is Ningyukarlak, and Prime Minister, it means bossy little old lady. <laughs> A lady who then tackled her lack of French head on with humility. Le plus, est, plus élevé. Sometimes I have a little trouble pronouncing, but I'm learning. <laughs> her words today about replacing hurt with hope, a message in keeping with the man who chose Simon for the job and his commitment to reconciliation. We need your vision of a stronger Canada for everyone. Sing like a bird to the oncoming light. A moment her family never thought they'd see. I thought of my mom and dad and my grandmother, and they would have been very proud of her. Simon has already moved into Rideau Hall, unlike her predecessor, a sign of a return to normalcy and her commitment to healing wounds of the past. Ashley Burke, CBC News, Ottawa. Great weather in the nation's capital. Well, as you saw there, St. John's musician Tim Baker performed a solo song for the new Governor General during today's ceremony. And we'll bring you that now as we leave you tonight. We're back again tomorrow for another half-hour newscast at 7.30, 7 o'clock in most parts of Labrador. Good night. Like a fool in a foolish coat Trying to be cool But just being cold I have seen The saddest thing That you cry And that you hide in it from me
The following program is available in described video.